to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Aren't you glad to be able to tune in on this Thursday night Bible study with Mount Zion Apostolic Church, and know that our God is good, and that his mercy endures forever. Amen, amen, hallelujah. We want to welcome everyone to the live feed that is going on tonight, uh, either via Facebook or YouTube or replay. Uh, we want to welcome everyone, and uh, and it's good to have you. And uh, we know that you're going to be tremendously blessed uh, tuning in not only by the praise um, by the praise team, but also with the good word from the Lord. Amen. Uh, we want to go before the Lord, and uh, and uh, we're going to go before the Lord and pray for some needs. But we're also going to have a few announcements. Um, we want to remind all the leaders that there's a leader's devotion at uh, 10 a.m. on Saturday via Zoom with Jason West. Uh, we also want to let everyone know that you can give on the Givelify app um, on the Android or the Apple um, device. And if you have a need that you need some, some prayer, um, feel free to reach out to our Mount Zion webpage or to our pastor or Brother Carrillo or anyone and, and just get it to us. Um, and let us know uh, that you, you're in need of prayer. So we're, with that being said, let's, let's uh, come together and let's worship the Lord. Let's pray for this offering. Let's pray for the rest of this service. Heavenly Father, we come before you today thanking you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, Lord, that endures forever. Lord, we want to ask you, Lord, to move on the hearts, God, of the folks that are watching this live stream today, God. We ask you, Lord, to praise, uh, to give us, God, the anointing, God, so that we may praise to you, God, give you all the praise, God. God, we ask you, Lord Jesus, God, to move on the hearts, God, of all the people, God, 
We ask you, Lord Jesus, that you fulfill every need, Lord, that, that anyone has, God, because we know, God, that your mercy endures forever, God, and that you're going to be close to us, God, when we're broken or when we're hurt, God. We know that you're going to be there, God, for us. And, Lord Jesus, we ask you, God, that you bless the giver, God, and that you bless their houses, God, that you open up the windows of heaven, God, and that you pour out a blessing, God, that they can't even handle, God. In Jesus' name, worship with us as we sing. Amen.
verses. It says, I can feel the presence of the Lord and I'm going to get my blessing right now. That does not say I can feel the presence of the Lord in the church house. That says I can feel the presence of the Lord and I'm going to get my blessing right now. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. So that means that in your house, in your home, in your living room, in your car, wherever you may be, you feel the presence of the Lord and you can get your blessing right now. I can feel the presence of the Lord and I'm going to get my blessing right now.
the Lord, everybody. It's good to be in the house of God on tonight. We give God the highest praise. He's worthy, amen, of all of the praise. Help me sing just a little bit of this song. to praise him I love to praise him yeah God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Truly, I thank God for just being here, amen, on tonight for another live stream, amen, at the Mount Zion Apostolic Church. Amen. And we're certainly looking for a blessing. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Praise the Lord. God has been good, amen, from the earliest of my existence unto this present time. God has been nothing but good to me. I just want to praise his holy name. We're going to be reading from the book of Mark on tonight. And the first, very first verse. And it says, And he began to teach and by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sword to sow. And it came to pass that as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among the thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And others fell on good ground. And it did yield fruit and sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty some 60, and some a hundredfold. Amen. Praise God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. By the help of the Lord tonight, I want to speak to you from a topic, guarding the, the heart of the church. Guarding the heart of the church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for just being so good to us. Thank you for the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. We pray that you would come tonight. Speak to our hearts, Holy Spirit. Give us a word that will bring life, oh God. Reach somebody 
on this evening in the name of Jesus, somebody that's going through, somebody that's anxious and fearful, oh God, we know that you're able to give them security. Bless us in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord again, everybody. Amen. God is a good God. Guarding the heart of the church. Guarding the heart of the church. I'm excited because it's no coincidence to me, but a providence that God has spoke to the pastor, Pastor Barker, and he gave him a vision, uh, a vision of us being the church. Matter of fact, it's a mantra that we have, amen, to be the church. And we're living in the coronavirus era. And a lot of people are fearing and they're afraid. But the church is us. The church is not the building. The church is the people of God. So then we ought to be able to glorify God and to magnify him no matter where we are. If it's in our homes, we should still be able to glorify and magnify the name of Jesus. See, I have a testimony, amen, of how God brought me out and how he kept me. I shouldn't have been here, but God made provision for me to be here. So there's a purpose. God has a purpose behind everything that he does. And the Bible says in this text that the enemy immediately, as the seed was, was sown by the way, the, the, and the, some of the seed fell by the wayside, and that the enemy immediately consumes the seed that had fallen by the wayside. Now, the wayside is a place kind of off, off course, if you will. It's on the fringes of what is considered common or acceptable are within the margins of safety. It's a place that you don't want to go. It's kind of out of bounds, if you will. Amen. Off where you shouldn't want to go. It's a drift of the tested and tried pathway in that over there on the, out, on, out, on the outside, there is no rules. There is no regulation by the wayside. It's kind of self-governing, no accountability. Now, it amazes me because men, for some reason, there's something about men that he doesn't want boundaries. You tell men, you know, to stay within the limits, and he wants to kind of go outside of those parameters. We think about manifest destiny, uh, the Westford expansion. It's something that makes men feel that he's entitled and justified to, to move a man forward as, as, as far as he desires. But God has given us boundaries for a reason. The church has boundaries. We, we're trying to guard the heart of the church. Now, the wayside is not the proper church to be in because it's easy to be on the wayside. The devil, amen, consumes that seed immediately, the Bible says. There's no accountability there again. There are no rules, no regulations. People can flock to this kind of atmosphere. So guidelines are intended to give us security and safety and protect against the many dangers, toils, and snares. The many dangers, toils, and snares. The Bible says that in 2 Timothy 3, chapter, chapter 3, that this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men will be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, and proud. They'll be blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and unholy. They'll have a form of godliness, but they'll deny the power thereof. Now, the perils are the dangers. God is trying to protect us from the dangers, the toils, and the snares that are lying out there by the wayside. God is trying to keep us, but it's, again, it's something about that, that taboo thing. I hear Paul saying that what I would do, I don't do it. But what I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Because we want to just pull ourselves toward that thing that is, is against 
the will of God or that thing that is restricting us. We don't want to be restricted. So then we see that like church, like people, I want to be in the church where the right things are being taught. Like church, like, like people, I want to be in a church where the heart of the church is right. Where the people's heart will reflect the glory of God. But there's a, there's a church where the, 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 the heart of the people reflects a different attitude. A different attitude. It's kind of off of the beaten paths or the proven paths. It's a shallow and superficial Christianity. It shows no desire for real life-changing truth. Aren't you glad you got the truth tonight? Aren't you glad you have the truth? We ought to shout off that right now because we have truth. Amen. God is so good and he's so merciful. I thank God for his truth. Clearly, they are unclear of the real mission of the church as they go about nonchalantly, casually, with no fear of God, not worried about a thing. That's not a good place to be in. You should be concerned about your attitude towards the things that concern God. You should be concerned about how you're living and how you're walking before God. It's not just living for God on a Sunday. You got to live for God Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You got to live for God all the time. It has to be in your heart. There's a song that says, you can't make it to heaven if your heart is not right. Your heart has to be in the right place, but on the wayside, they don't give attention to the heart. This parcel of ground is where thousands gather together to flock and hear teachers that are gonna satisfy their itching ears. See, the enemy doesn't mind when we accept invitations to these feel-good, non-committed, do-as-you-please worship centers. This is what Isaiah says about it. He says, these people draw near to me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. See, because the word of God is not valued on the premises of the blessings that would follow are hindered. So what am I saying? I want the blessings of God. I want more than just the benefit. The blessing I heard the pastor say is eternal. The benefit can just be temporal. People are reaching out for just temporary blessings. But I want the full blown blessings of God. I want to feel the full anointing of God. I want to feel the, feel the full presence of God. I want God to be, compl I want to be completely endowed by the power and the anointing of God. Led by God. Hallelujah. See, every word of God is pure. Every word. The right environment, I mind you, will cause seed to germinate and produce the life-changing fruit of healing, deliverance, wisdom, and salvation. The seed of the word of God is the word of God, the bread of life. It nourishes us and sustains the spiritual man. The enemy of our soul will take for spoil and extract the word from the hearts of those standing by the wayside. John abrades the church in Asia, specifically Sardis. In Revelations 3 and 1, he says, No, I know thy works, that thou hast, thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. But Message Bible says like this, I, I, I see right through your works. You have a reputation for vigor, zest, but you're dead. You're stone dead. It bothers me because so many are falling by the wayside. So many are falling by the wayside. I heard the pastor speaking about this, I think, on Sunday. He was talking about people are, are giving up. They're giving up. They, for some reason, the saints of God, anybody has hope, the people of God should have hope. The people of God should know where their blessings are coming from. Then we have seed that falls on stony ground or gravel, if you will. At once it rises up, but it puts down no roots. Therefore, when the sun comes up, it withers just as quickly. 
the message preceding the coming of Christ for by, the, by his forerunner, John the Baptist was one of repentance. See, repentance will cause conversion in the heart of the believers. Acts 3 and 19 says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So in similar fashion, the word of God will rest upon an impenitent heart condition. Notwithstanding, the word will only respond according to the environment of the faith. It, 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 it depends on you. You can change it. You, you, can, you can break up that fallow ground. You can tell God to give you a heart of flesh. There's no church that can effectively thrive without repentance. John warned every church whether the report was good or bad to repent. Many in today's assemblies disvalue the importance of repentance. The parishioners there of these congregations experience a pseudo or false sense of excitement, enthusiasm, or joy. But this is what Ezekiel says, a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I'll give you a heart of flesh. But because I choose not to allow the word of God to penetrate into the depths of my spirit and soul, I can unwisely, unwisely rationalize why I shouldn't give God my all. We got to give God our all. God wants all of us. He wants all of us. Whole body should belong to God. The prophet Hosea summarizes this as he addresses the nation of Israel. He says, he acknowledges the gatherings in chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. He says, sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and rain righteousness upon you. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies. Because thou didn't, didst not trust in the way. Living for God, again, requires commitment. It has to be unreserved, total submission. Lord, I surrender all. To you, everything I give to you, I withhold nothing. The root of, God, words, God, the root of God's word seeks an unrestricted passage into the fertile soil of the heart. If it's blocked or prevented, spiritual growth will be impeded. As a result, I'm half-hearted, not wholly committed into God. We want to be serving to build the kingdom of God. See, on the stony ground, I'm joyful and alive for a moment. For the moment, it sounds good. It feels good. However, when I'm challenged for my faith, Affliction and persecution is developed for the word, word's sake. Without delay, I'm offended. I'm hurt. I'm fed up. The Message Bible says again, it is like this. They respond with great enthusiasm. But there is such a shallow soil of character that when emotions wear off and some difficulty arrives, there's nothing to show for it. Stony ground. Thorny ground. Now we move to thorny ground and said the seed that lands in the thorns coexists with, with plant life unlike itself. To expect that you reap a fruitful crop of grapes among bramble bushes is not practical thinking. thinking. See, the thorns is the world. The thorns is worldly life. The thorns, it looks good on the outside. It's a facade. But the thorn is painful. It's going to bring hurt to your life. It's going to bring disappointment to your life. Thorny, thorny ground, it suffocates the seed. See, a weed patch does not offer the appropriate condition to sustain life of good seed that is sown. Good fruit and vegetable bearing seeds are easily put in check by suffocating and choking the thorns, choking thorns and thistles and rendered fruitless. The state of this heart is capable of hearing the word, but it gets distracted. By all of the activity going on around it. It's characterized worldliness and it's enamored with riches and wealth. Jesus didn't even have a place to lay his head. First Timothy 6, 5 and 6 says, 
they suppose that gain is godliness. From such, turn away. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 and 20 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust can corrupt it, where thieves can't break through or steal. So it's where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Careful in informed decisions has to be made, careful and informed decisions has to be made at this point. One must not be rash. This situation and condition does not select you, but you choose it. But there's a better ground. There's a ground of productivity. There's a ground that's God's way. There's a ground that's fruitful ground. A ground that brings forth some, the Bible says, 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. This is good soil. You want, this is the church. This is what Mount Zion is about. This is the kind of ground this church is built on. On solid, good ground. On the word of God. Not tossed about by every wind of doctrine. Know how to praise God irregardless. Because it's easy to praise God when things are going well. It's easy to praise God when, when life, amen, has presented everything that you need and you have no want. But when it seems like everything has been shut off from you, can you still praise God? Can you still praise him during the coronavirus? Because if you haven't, re if you haven't rejoiced, amen, during this season of the coronavirus, I, I wonder about Amen, your, what you have. You, you still ought to be able to rejoice. You still ought to be able to put your hands up. You still ought to be able to raise your voice. You still ought to be able to magnify the Lord. It's something about Jesus. Amen, I can't explain it, but he's worthy of the praise all the time. He's worthy of the praise all the time. The New York Times has an article of this theologian that's saying the church offers no answers to the coronavirus and is not supposed to. This is what a theologian, a British theologian says. He says, what if the only moment is to wait without hope? For we will be hoping for the wrong thing. I don't agree with that concept. I think the church of God should always have hope. We always got something to hope for. If anybody can get, a, get an answer, the church of God can get an answer. The church of God can, can reveal, I, and I believe, amen, this is for the church. What's going on is to get the heart of the church right. God is trying to recondition. He's trying to get us closer. God is trying to draw us nearer to him. Amen. He's not trying to cause us to push, to go, us, to go astray and to leave the will of God, but he's trying to draw us closer. It's a check on the church. It's a check on the church. Amen. It's a check on the real church. Can you stand? Will you give up? So many falling, by the way. But Lord, I wonder if you are going to stand out there. I wonder if you're going to hold on to God's unchanging hands. I wonder if you're still going to express joy. I wonder if you're going to still have the victory. Can you wait on the Lord? Can we wait on him? Can we wait? God's anger is just for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy is coming in the morning. I don't know about you, but I'm still going to celebrate Jesus. I'm still going to lift his name up. In the midst of all I'm going to, I'm still going to have joy. I'm still going to worship and serve him. I'm still going to be a man up, up to reaching out to others and, and trying to support the work of the ministry of God. I still want to be building the kingdom of God. It's not time to get relaxed in Zion because, see, there's a church that's just 70 degrees under the air. There's a church, amen, that's just, they're just content with where they are. But you can't be content where you are. 
There's a church, amen, that's on fire for God. No, no matter what the situation is, there's a church that are still holding out despite the pain that they're feeling. Despite the disappointment, the anxiety that we can sometimes feel, the church is still thriving. I praise God for the truth on tonight. I lift God up for the truth tonight. I feel like praising him because he's worthy of the praise. I praise him. See, my testimony, amen, is that God can bring you out. Again, I shouldn't have been here. He should have taken me in the tornado as it demolished my home in a little town of Alabama. Shouldn't be here, but God has a purpose. God has a reason for where you are. Everybody has a story. Everybody has something that God has brought them to. He took me through a fire, destroyed my home. I should have been there, but God made a way for me not to be there at that particular night. And I praise him because if I had, the very room that I slept in is where the fire began. But God's providence, his mercy and his grace, and I praise him, amen, that he brought me out. My testimony is, is that you may be out there and you're strung out on drugs and, and you, uh, you have alcohol problems. God can keep you. You don't have to do the drugs. You don't have to, you don't have to get high. I've never been high. I mean, never been high, but on the word of God, you can make it, you can stand, you can be kept. God will keep you if you want to be kept. Can I get a witness? God will keep you if you want to be kept. But you got to keep your mind stayed on God. Stayed on God. I thank God for the older saints of God that have, that have been in the way. God have called the fathers and the mothers because they know the way. He calls the young because they are strong. They've overcome the weak one. But it's important that we have elders that can show us the way. That can show us how we ought to, to walk before God. That can show us how, amen, in hard times, you can still stand. You need to see, amen, when we see them, we see examples of people that did not give up. I'm telling you, don't you give up. Out there, do not give up. Rejoice in the Lord. Brother Cervantes sends me this scripture, and I, heard, I received it on him. He said, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. We don't just pray for a minute. We pray until God gives the answer. Until God speaks to our hearts. To God brings deliverance. We pray until God answers. The answer may not be what we want to hear, but we pray until God answers. He, God has an answer. If we stay on our knees, he'll answer prayer. Good ground. I'm glad to be on good ground. I don't want to be on the wayside. I want to be in the church. I don't want to walk on the edges. There's danger on the edges. There's no security on the edges. The enemy. The wayside is outside of the path. But stay in the way. The wayside is outside of the way. See, it's not the way. We're in the way, the truth and the life. We're in the right way. But they're in a way, a way that seems right. But the end thereof is the way of destruction. I don't want to be in that way. I want to stand. We've got to protect the heart of the church. We've got to protect the heart of the church. We've got to believe in what the man of God is teaching. I thank God, man, that he used him, spoke to him, to be the church. The building is not the church. And it's not a coincidence. That's providence. Be the church. Isn't that something that being in the beginning of the year? 
I don't know if he saw it, but God spoke to him to get us ready to be the church. It has to be more than lip service. It gotta, it's got to be more than lip service. It has to be in your heart. It has to be embedded in your spirit. Deep down in your soul, it has to be there. My God, what a wonderful God we serve. Because the help of God is coming to see us through. I'm not kind of I'm not I'm not really used to this new norm that they're talking about. The, the new norm. I don't see the church. <laughs> God has commanded the church to come together. So the new norm, this can't be our new norm. We've got to be wise, but the Bible tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. It's important. Amen. Our ministry is about people. Our ministry is to help others. And so the new norm may be social distancing from a lot, for a lot of people. And we don't know how long they may try to impose that. But we just can't sit quietly. We just can't sit, sit quietly, amen, because we want to run these aisles. Amen. We just can't sit quietly, amen, while they try to impo impose a new norm on the church. The word of God never changes. See, God, the, the world changes. Situations change. But, the, but God does not change. God is telling the church to stand. To stand on my word. Pray until you get an answer. If you don't have the answer, pray until you get an answer. That's what I like about the old saints of God. They know how to pray. They know how to pray. I'm talking about the y'all club out there. They know how to pray. I'm a part of that club. But they know how to just wait on the Lord. They know how to wait on God. Thriving. Another minister, young people, I know you know how to wait. But, amen, it means something when you've spent some time and you've had some experience with God. Amen. You've been in the trenches for a while and you've seen God make a way. You've seen God open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. You've seen God deliver. You've seen God make a change. My Lord, I thank God for the old way. By the wayside in the stony ground is a new way. It's not fully committed. It's not fully committed. Saints of God, look to Jesus. As the musicians come, look to Jesus. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. He's a way maker. He's a way maker. He's a prayer answerer. God is a soul saver. He's a keeper. Am I right? He's a keeper. If you want to be kept, God is a keeper. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No one can heal the world's diseases. Nobody but Jesus. No one can change a wounded heart. Nobody but Jesus. There's nobody that can set you free but Jesus. Nobody but him. Put your confidence in him. Trust in the Lord. And he'll make a way for you. He'll give you the ability to stand. When others around you are all anxious, confused, he'll give you some peace that passeth all understanding. Aren't you glad about it? I'm glad that I still have peace. I'm glad that the church, we still have joy. Out of all we've been through, all we've experienced, we still can wave our hands to God. Acknowledge that, God, you're the only wise God. You're the only potentate. You're the king of kings. You're the Lord of lords. We lift your name on high. We love to sing your praises, God. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done. Lord, we pray that you would reach that soul out there tonight. Touch that one, oh God. Oh, Father, that's confused about this transition that, we, that we're going through on tonight. Oh, God, in this season. We pray, oh God, that you would bring healing. That you would bring deliverance. Most of all, Lord, we pray that you would bring salvation. 
Oh God, we worship you tonight. Our soul cries out, hallelujah. You're a mighty God. You're an awesome God. You're awesome in this place. Wait on the Lord. Wait on him. Because they that wait on him shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings of eagles. They'll run. They'll not be weary. They'll walk and not faint.
you cause walls to fall with your power you perform miracles there is nothing Jesus that's impossible and we're standing here only because you made 